Are you serious? Are you serious? We do have breaking news, of course, that uh, Russia has delivered on those S-300 air defense systems. They have already delivered them. I mean, they didn't take the full two weeks like they said. Matter of fact, a spokesman for the Russian company producing the electronic well warfare system says that the deployment to Syria will happen, that happened, is going to protect the country's air defense assets and fend off any enemy air raids. Well, this isn't really about Syria that much as, more, as it's more about Iran, okay, to be honest with you. Uh, in some cases, I want you to know that, uh, and I had a good conversation with my contacts, that you have to understand that Greece has had the S-300 uh, missile defense system for some time now, and that Israel has already worked on some counter military uh, counter uh, measures on how to get around these S-300s. So in some ways, I think maybe Russia is doing this just to save face. And I'm still not sure that the Israelis are the ones that shot down, or, or excuse me, they didn't, the Israelis did not shoot down the Russian plane. Uh, I'm still not sure the Israelis were really the ones that caused the Syrians to accidentally shoot down a Russian plane. There's still some possibility that that French frigate that fired that missile out of the Mediterranean at the exact same time, that that might have been what shot the Russian plane down. But of course, Russia can't could never admit to that or never confirm that because if they did, then they would have to respond against France. And if that happens, then you've got NATO and you got the United States and, you know, that wouldn't work. So I think in some ways Russia has got to eat, eat, you know, bite the bullet on this one. But, but this is still significant that we're, because, you know, no, this isn't the S 400s. No, this isn't the S 500s, but this still is a significant uh, technological upgrade for President Assad of Syria that Russia has delivered on these S-300s. And um, now Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Larvov uh, says that Moscow has started delivering these S-300 air defense systems to Syrian's government. Larvov also asked about the S-300s at a news conference uh, just yesterday. He responded, he said the delivery started already. He added that the measures will take uh, will be devoted to ensure 100% safety and security of our men in Syria, and we will do this. Now, Russia announced earlier in the week that it would supply anti-aircraft missiles after Syrian forces responded to an Israeli airstrike on September 17th, mistakenly shot down a Russian military reconnaissance plane, killing all 15 Russian servicemen on board. Uh, again, the friendly fire incident sparked regional tensions. Now, Israeli's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the Russian President Vladimir Putin to express the sorrow of the loss of life and sent a high-level military delegation to Moscow to patch this thing up. Now, a spokesman for a Russian company producing the electronic warfare systems says that their development of Syria, to, the development to Syria, this deployment of these missiles will help protect the country's air defense assets and fend off any enemy air raids. Vladimir, also Vladimir Mekivov of the Radio Electronics Technologies yesterday said in remarks carried by the Interfax News Agency that uh, uh, the units will place Syria's air defenses under an electronic umbrella, making it hard to spot and attack them. Um, so we'll, the, the, I guess the question to see is, and it is a good system, but the question is, does it, it, we're really not talking that much about Israel wanting to shoot down Assad's uh, military, although he will if he if if he sees that Assad is assisting in transferring uh, sophisticated weaponry or missiles to the Hezbollah over in Lebanon, then Israel don't care who's doing it. Anybody that's sending missiles to Lebanon, they'll, they'll blow up their planes, trains, or automobiles, or submarines, or anything else they got. Okay, Israel don't care. You have to understand, they don't care. And they got Big Brother America on their side, but they got more than that. They, they got the Lord on their side, and they know it. And uh, so having said that, uh, this isn't about Israel and Syria as much as it's about Iran in Syria. And that's why you saw Benjamin Netanyahu Thursday. Of course, no, you didn't see it. I forgot. The whole world was watching the Kavanaugh chaos. And, well, and I told you guys that, that the Kavanaugh thing was part of it was to be a circus 
to keep you from watching what was really going on in New York at the United Nations. Because the exact same time the chaos was going on with Kavanaugh, Benjamin Netanyahu was standing up there in front of the entire United Nations General Assembly showing, holding up boards showing uh, atomic nuclear warehouses that the Iranians have and showing them where the locations were and that something has to be done. But now the world did not know this was happening because nobody had their televisions turned in that direction. So that's the real story here. I ran, I ran uh, trying to get in position to, uh, to attack Israel. You're looking at Psalms 83. You're looking right at it. The nations are forming coalitions. Everybody's choosing up sides. And uh, it's getting intense. You can't have this many armies in a, in a small airspace like Syria. So we're going to continue to keep a close eye on it. I know that uh, there's good reports going on out there everywhere. Uh, stay on top of this, okay? We're living in the end times. I'll be back with more current world events and how they relate to biblical prophecy. But the Middle East, uh, you know, I just put up earlier this morning, I did a television show, of course. It airs tomorrow night. The television show will air tomorrow night on Direct TV channel 367, my television show called The Coming Apocalypse. Now, I'm interviewing Dr. Irvin Baxter about the Middle East peace plan, the final peace plan. It's ready. And uh, Dr. Baxter, his information is he under, he, he's got some uh, in, insiders. Uh, and, and he said it's ready. As a matter of fact, Trump was going to deliver that peace plan to the United Nations uh, when he spoke on Tuesday, but he ended up, they changed their mind. It wasn't time to unveil it. He couldn't unveil it. There's some, there's some things with the boss and some things going on that he just qu- could, couldn't do it. So he focused his speech more on, uh, you know, America first and, uh, and that kind of thing and stayed focused. So we got a lot going on right now, a lot going on, okay? And uh, hang on, I'm sorry. Got a lot going on, and we got to stay focused on what's happening. But Netanyahu is not done with the Iranians, believe me. And so, and as the dream I had in 19, excuse me, the dream that I had in the year 2013. Um, I'm so sorry. I got a phone down here I don't usually have here, and it's ringing off the hook. <laughs> okay, the dream I had in 2013 where I saw Iranian and Russian planes attacking Israel. I literally seen it. Mainly Iranians. Uh, the Russians were kind of ba- basically watching the skies, but it was mainly Iran, Iran dro- dropping bombs in Israel. And I was so distraught, I went and uh, I went to the, I was in Jerusalem when I had this dream and I actually went down to the Wailing Wall, went down to the Western Wall and I prayed there for the peace of Jerusalem. And then I went back to the hotel that day and wrote the first 17 chapters of my book, Jerusalem Jihad. Uh, And uh, based on the dream and current world events and biblical prophecy, tying it all into a novel. Um, So anyway, we're in the last days, guys. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time.